Hello and welcome to a new series on the YouTube channel. Yes, the weekly selections will be coming out uh, obviously every week. We've got a new one now. It's a new manner, a new demeanour. It's hot takes. Horse ratings, hot takes. Where we get your questions and opinions in and we basically rate them. We either say if you're correct in our eyes or if we maybe disagree from time to time. But of course, that's the beauty of our game of horse racing. I'm, of course, joined by the usual suspects. Uh, I don't know if you can tell something different about Harry. Comment it down below if you can, but I'll go to him first. Harry, have you had a good weekend? Um, tipping selections, I'd probably go no, Ash, to be fair. We had a couple of places. <laughs> um, managed to grow a load of uh, facial hair for once in my life. <laughs> uh, but no, all good. I'm looking forward to this. It should be good. Yeah, grown the facial hair there. Yeah, grown. Um, Lee, yourself, good weekend? Good to get the Scottish national winner. I know you lads are but... Out with the washing, but obviously won the Ada, so uh, yeah, good winner, win my wings. Very nice, and obviously my nap, Sabrina, didn't finish out of the money, she finished third, and that's uh, that's all I can ask for, really, of my nips, uh, naps at the moment, so we'll take it. Um, so we'll go on to the first hot take of the episode, and we're starting with a fiery one. Uh, it's Ollie Mulligan, uh, Ollie underscore mug, and he says that Constitution Hill is the best winner of the Supreme for the last 10 years. Oh, my word. We start off with a good one. Harry, you sat down, slumps in the chair with your hood on. Please take this away. Well, I'm just going to start, Ollie, and we'll start as we mean to go on. It's in the surname, Ollie. You've made a mug of a statement, son. <laughs> Constitutional, the best, best in 10 years. Have you heard of Altior? Have you heard of Altior? What an absolute machine. And just, to, I think LeBake was a machine on his day. When he did oh, decide to on, refuse. Come on, When he did decide, shut come up. On. When he did decide come to on. refuse. No, I'm, I'm being serious. And obviously not LeBake. I think Constitution Hill was a machine. But to say a horse who's ran three times in his career is the best winner of the Supreme at this stage is a joke. So, Ollie, it's a, a, it's a Nen from Len. Mugged off. That's what take, being okay, mugged okay. Off. Take it from this value, gents, because obviously we know what some of these have done: Shishkin, Classical Dream, Altior, Duvan, Vator. We know what they've done in their previous, like it, after the Supreme. Okay, take it on face value of that Supreme. I don't know where, where you were at your stage of watching horse racing. Where would Constitution Hill rank as Supreme winners, just purely on their Supreme, Lee? Uh, look, if you go to the, the likes of Duvan. Altio, um, Futura. Oh, yeah, but you know what? Altharoff, when he won it, I'm just going back, I think that's 11 years old. I think it was 2011. Altharoff beat uh, Spirit Sun, Sprinter Satra and Q Cod. So I know you obviously then have to look a bit forward, but the, the actual race, it flew home to win that one. Um, you have to take it whether you want a, a, a distance winner, um, or a one with a good time, or a one with uh, potential, but proven, it's not proven at the minute. So for me, it's definitely not the best winner of the Supreme. I'm Lads, I've told it. you where it's going. I've told you where it's going. I've said Gallop Under Champs is going over to Australia. Oh, Full yeah, Ban yeah. is going over to Australia. Deck will agree with me over Under Starters Orders <laughs> podcast. Go and check him out. He'll tell you they're all going to the Melbourne Cup. They're all going. No, I'm not having this. And also, I'd like to play devil's advocate here. And it's personal opinion. I think he could be. I'm sorry. I think he could be. He's absolutely mashed up. He's absolutely mashed up. And people, if you remember, people were saying this is one of the hottest Supremes for the last 10 years. He's absolutely mashed him up. He has won by, he's won by half the track. John Bond couldn't even get, couldn't even touch his tail. John Bond was gone. Obviously, Dice Art Dynamo fell. Mighty Potter underperformed. All of them. Kill Crook, last year's bumper winner. Couldn't lay a finger on him. He's galloped him into submission. Absolutely rapid pace from Dice Art Dynamo. And he's finished off so strong. Track record, gents. Track record. Of he's his on third firm start. ground. What Track record. He's beaten Addy Power and Addy Power's getting about <laughs> £12 off. Yeah, he's got, oh, I think, my God. Look, I don't want to crucify myself on the first one, but I think he look, very much could be. If you put Constitution Hill in with Altior, Duvan, Vitua, the likes of them, where, where would he finish then? He'd get mullered. 
I, I, it, I don't know. It's, you know, Albiol actually flew up the hill and just because he didn't win by this 20-yard length or something. I mean, appreciate it won by 25 length or whatever. It was the worst yeah. Supreme I've ever seen. It was terrible. So, you know what? Just, the, just because the distance and stuff doesn't mean that it's a great Supreme. Nico de Boimer was thinking about his other rides throughout the day when he was on Constitution Hill. He was actually Nick, sat there. He, he, was, the he, was, he had one hand on the reins. He was just saying, he was pumping up the crowd about two miles from home. It was brilliant. Um, I think Constitution Hill could be up there, uh, but only time. Could. Only time. Could, could. Be. Yeah, could. 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 But I think only time will tell. I think he's an absolute machine. <laughs> the next one, we're going to take a slight drift to the flat. Uh, we've got Jay at Trackside Jay, and he says that Caravaggio uh, would have been That's better cool. over a mile uh, than he was at sprinting. Caravaggio, obviously, multiple Group 1 winner, over six furlongs. Absolute Aidan O'Brien legend. And Lee, you seem to know a little bit about the flat. What do you make of this? <laughs> over a mile? Would he, have been, would he have been something different over a mile? Look, first of all, I'm a National Hunt lad. I tip one flat horse the other day and I got straight in for it, right? It but actually, well, me nap yeah. finished second, so, you know. It, <laughs> it was second, Caravaggio would have been better over a male. Um, I think as they progress, and especially Aidan's the one to go that little bit further, and um, it started off, obviously, a couple of six furlongs, uh, Commonwealth Cup, um, won that beat Harry Angel, so it, it was fine then, but then the, the next year, I would have said, when it was stepping up in the July Cup and stuff, I think it was staying on and uh, was fourth in that. Um, same with the champion sprint. That's a group one. Beating two lens, stayed on as well. I, I think it would have been better over the mail, to be honest. But uh, <laughs> the flat's not one for me, to be totally honest. You, would have, you thought he would have been better over a mile, an extra two furlongs when he's an out-and-out out sprinter? No, I do. I think that we look. It, it was this the last runs. I think they should have tried, obviously, over that. But then, obviously, it, it it didn't get that chance. So, I can see his latter career, but I just I think he has too much speed. I think he would. I think he'd get outclassed, uh, out sort of tactical. And I think he's mm. a full on six furlong horse. Harry, I know the flat doesn't excite you there with a little yawn, but yourself, yeah. do you have an opinion on this one? No, obviously, Caravaggio, taking off in a way, he was absolutely superb, wasn't he, really? But um, I can't see how Aidan O'Brien wouldn't realise what his best trip was after winning all those group ones. So, yeah, But then, didn't they retire him? That was it, so that he didn't get the chance really to do it. But then even in his breeding wasn't exactly... I mean, he's bred by Scat Daddy. He's not exactly known for top-class milers. Sprinters, obviously, yes. But I wouldn't say... I can't see why he'd be even better over a mile than what he was in the sprinting distances. Ah, uh, sure. Oh, sure, Harry. We're delighted. We're delighted with Caravaggio. We're delighted. That was my no bright impression there. That was my no bright impression there. Oh and I'm not going to bring out. I'm not going to bring out another one. Anyway, I love enough, that. <laughs> enough of Caravaggio. Uh, on see to the, the lads back home. They're delighted, lads. The lads. Oh, the, the team's delighted. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure, Rishi. <laughs> We <laughs> go to Ali Wrighton, uh, at Ali Wrighton. Uh, Shishkin uh, won't be the same after that disappointment in the Queen Mother. I put good money on it. I don't know how good is that money, Ali, but we're going to go Harry. Do you think Shishkin is going to be back towards his best? I'm seriously worried. I was worried after seeing that race. Um, Nico can say all the stuff that he, well, he pulled him up early, but... I just do not like seeing horses pull up like that. It just wasn't. And he didn't even jump one fence, really, did he? He, he, he ploughed through the first first couple and then jumped like a like anything you want to describe him, how he jumped. Like he did not jump like the shish. Yeah, literally was. It, it wasn't nice to see. Um, and if he's going to if he's gonna <laughs> recoup what he won at Ascot or reproduce that sort of form, he's... He's got a lot. Of, he's got a lot to do, hasn't he? I think there was just something amiss on the day. Like I think it's really, and I, I it's hard, and I, I don't think we can say that he's not going to be where he is because off one run. Like if we did that about everyone, did that about Corto Star finishing, you know, however many lengths he did behind Denman, you know, we'd be writing off horses left, right, and centre. And I think Shishkin, he's put in one, you know, 
bad performance there. We saw it at uh, Aintree last season, even though he got the job done. Uh, it wasn't exactly impressive towards the end of the season. I just think, and I really do think this, I think Mullins left a little bit off at Ascot. I think he left Yeah, I agree. 5 or 10% off Energumen. I thought Nicky was like, because Nicky, he doesn't send these into big battles unless it's Cheltenham. I think he put his cards down on the table and he went, right, Shishkin's winning. We're doing him 110, 120% for this race. And I think maybe something's come off that. The ground, I can't buy it because time form had the times down as soft, uh, even though it went, to, it went to heavy next race. He's won, I think, five times on soft, I want to say, so four or five times. He's done well on heavy, I think, one time as well. I'm not sure you can completely say that's completely down to ground. I think there was something amiss there. It'd be interesting to see how these tests come back that they're conducting at Seven Barrows. We can't write him off. I'm saying I can't write him off. Lee, do you share similar opinions? I do. I think, look, you've got to give each horse one bad run at least. Um, so I'd at least forgive that one. I'd want to see him afterwards. And then, look, I'm not the type to raid off a cliff with one, but um, at least give him one bad run and then see how he goes. It, it, just from one bad run, you can't really like rate him off and think that's it. Look, Sprint Asakra, he, he done it. He come back, obviously, with a different, uh, the regular heartbeat and stuff, but he still then come back and won it. Queen Mother, do you know what I mean? So just off one bad run, definitely not. Yes. Saying that, we, we know we didn't know that Energamine wouldn't like the course, and he bolted up. True. Simple as he he bolted him. We're going to move on to one of our feature opinions, and it's from Pete, a lovely friend of ours at Risk for Rewards, and he says that Tiger Roll would have achieved more in the last five years under different owners. And I'm going to cap this. I've just done a little bit of research just for time. Five years. So it's the season starting his first cross country win at Cheltenham. So he's just won the National Hunt Chase at Cheltenham. He's going into that season where he beat um, uh, he beat Urgent de, de Gregan, get the words out correctly, yeah. in the cross country at Cheltenham under different owners. Is he doing better things, Lee? Lee? No, I, I, I don't think no. I'm just trying to think. So, like, what more can you actually do with him? No, he's not mm. going to win a gold cup. The, 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 the aimed him for a national. Look, Last season, yes, you could have had a go at the national, um, but I think they're just doing right by the horse. I actually don't slate them as much as uh, people do, and especially uh, this season, I think it was Ray to retire him after a good go at Cheltenham. One thing I wasn't happy about is the Delta work, but, but, but I don't personally think that they should have ran him. I know people want best competition and stuff, but not for me. I, I would have liked to see him go out at the best on the top. And, um, and, and finish like that. But I don't see what more they can really do. Look, Gordon Elliott can probably have a good say in it. But the owners obviously get the ultimate say. Meg Lowe-Leary is going to have the final say. And uh, look, he's not going to win a Gold Cup. So where, where else do you go, to be honest? Just, Lee, on, on that, before we go into this, would you have yeah. rather had Tiger Roll running his absolute heart out and getting done by three quarters of length or would you have him stroll into a 12 length victory and not beat him much? And we just we just crown him as the inaugural winner of the cross country chase because nothing else was there. Because I think, and I, I had to simmer no. on this. I had to simmer on this because there's the photo going around of me looking absolutely just done <laughs> with life. Uh, stood, next to, stood next to Michael O'Leary. I had to simmer on this and I was writing my piece for the local newspaper. And I actually thought I was quite happy with that. Do you think of the TV it made? He comes out, it's absolutely pissing it down with rain. No one's outside but the people that are devoted to the game. Tiger Roll is coming out. No one's come out for the Queen Mother. Like, people have come out for it, but not as many as Tiger Roll. A lot of people came out for Tiger Roll to see him run his absolute heart out and get done on the line. Everyone comes out to clap him in. There's a storyline of he's been done on the line, but he's run his absolute heart out, 110%. Last race, Tiger Roll in his prime. I think it's absolutely perfect, to be honest. I think if he got up, then obviously that would have been, you know, tip top, even more perfect. But I think him running to three quarters of length is something different, personally, anyway. Uh, it, it would be different if it was different owners and stuff like that. And yeah, you're going to be competitive, but yeah, mm. you're running from the same stable, the same owners. Like they've thought, well, I've got one to compete against this legend. I know Michael O'Reilly would have been been sickened when he's come by him. So oh, yeah. I just think uh, I think they're a bit daft to do it. 
look, you want to be seeing the competitive racing. I did back Tiger also. You know, you talk out your pocket half the time, but um, nah, <laughs> nah. I've still got the uh, losing ticket in my uh, my windscreen in my like pull down on my windscreen in my car. I've got two losing tickets from the festival. It's Gallop in the Champs and Tiger Roll. It's two I'm never going to get over in my life. Um, Harry, Tiger Roll, uh, last five years, back to the question. I don't know, but like, like Lisa, what, how, what more can you do with him? I mean, if you, you aim him at entry, you go to that prep run at Navin that he tends to always the, go to. The Boyne. The then he goes to the Boyne, yeah, the Boyne hurdle. Then goes to the cross country. Usually bolts up there and then goes to the national. But what else do you want it to do? Do you want it to go to the Melbourne Cup? I mean, <laughs> get, get this Melbourne it. Cup. We're not having yeah. the whole national hunt scene go to the Melbourne Cup. We're not having we're not having Denman coming out. We're not having Sprinter Sacker come out of retirement. Go to the masterminded. Cup. We're not having masterminded. We've got a question about him. We're not having all these people go to the Melbourne Cup. Stick him over yeah. hurdles and keep him there. Yeah, no, Jesus. but just go back to di- Tiger Roll. But <laughs> I don't, I just, I, what can like, you, what, what else can you do with him? Where else could you have ran him bar the yeah. Gold Cup, I would have said. But why? You, because, like, it, you've seen you him over those fences. And can I, but uh, look, the likes of um, like many clouds, ne- Neptune Clange, they tried the Gold Cup and then the Grand National route, mm. and it, it, it didn't work. They didn't win the Gold Cup, they won the National. You, you have to go, like, that cross country obviously suit is. Suits the race better for a prep for the Grand National. That's how I'd yeah. say. It. Well, I, can... I don't think you could own. I don't think you could own him differently. And I think if you're going to blame anyone, you'd say would Gordon Elliott train Tiger Roll differently? And I think Gordon Elliott has literally been the master at work. And I think he's he's teed Tiger Roll up to a plate, hasn't he? Really for for his targets, and he's got him prepped prepped to perfection. So for me, there's no complaints. I can't see what else they could have done with him. It's an, agree- it's an agreement from all three of us to disagree with Pete. I think there's nothing more. Sorry, Pete. Sorry, Pete. Sorry, Pete. We Sorry, love Pete. you. We love you, Pete. Uh, but I think there's nothing more they could do. And look, there's obviously going to be the thing about the National this year, but look, would he have gone at his age? I would have been scared. I was in his second Grand National. I was scared going away around because, you know, he's, he's an amazing jumper, but you don't know what can happen to these horses. And I was scared going around at Cheltenham. Yeah, I honestly, scared if anything happened. Like, and that's the thing, if he'd gone for this Grand National off a monster weight, I don't know. I personally, I'd have been scared the whole time until he'd, you know, done something like finish fourth or yeah. something like that, you know. It's my, I was still with a, uh, one of my dad's racing mates who never shouts for horses, even if he backs them. doesn't matter if he's got a whole mortgage on, he never shouts them. He just smiles and says, yeah, about that one. I was stood with him, and it's the first time I've heard him shout, and he said, go on, Tiger. And it's about the four out. He wasn't even around the bend yet. It was about four out, and he's saying, go on, Tiger. That would have been something different if he won, but, you know, <laughs> I think back to the question, back to the opinion, we all agree his ownership was fine. And the final one, a non-horse racing one to end it. We're going to do this every week. Um, Ali Wrighton's back. He's a loyal listener as, as he looks in the comments. Uh, and he's back and he's saying, unrelated to horse racing, but sweet potato fries are better than the normal ones. And it's the emoji with the hands up thing right there. Yeah, I'm going to start I'll it off. This. Oh, go on, go on, go on. Look. You got. I'm a big lad. Listen to the big lads. The <laughs> chips are best, right? Don't start with this, Ali. Sweet potato fries, and you know, like I'll have an iced tea when I go out. No, get a get a <laughs> pint. Get some chips down here. Get them chunky chips, and you know, gravy, whatever you want to do. But no, not sweet potato fries. I think on face value, if you're comparing sweet potato fries to fries. Like just regularly salted, no sauces on it. I, I, I agree with Ali. Sweet potato fries yeah, all day. Yeah. Sweet potato fries all day. They got a different flavour. Lads, <laughs> you are from down south. Like sweet potato fries round your castle, they'll just laugh you straight over the time break. Oh, how weird, man. How Get back to some. How weird. How how weird. Chips, That's what I want. I think sweet potato fries are different. If they're cooked just that little crispness, you know, just like, oh. Oh, they are nice. Oh. They are good. Yeah. And Harry agrees with me. I'm sorry, Lee, it's two to one. Ali, you can go in the Hall of Fame for Only Fools Love Horses oh. for that comment. Oh, I think that's the only one we've agreed on, to be fair, isn't it? Yeah, we've all had our different opinions sometimes, but I think that's yeah. two of us are strongly agreed and Lee is just sat looking at his face. Uh. I'm going to get some chips. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. That is all of our opinions uh, for Horse Racing's Hot Takes. Uh, first week, uh, hopefully you enjoyed. 
Uh, and if there's something you want to see in the future going forward, we'd love to keep creating them. Uh, so give it a like, uh, give it a share, give it a comment, just telling us what you liked and what you disliked as well. And if it's about Harry's hoodie, I completely understand. Um, I, I do apologise. I have just got out of the shower, so I do apologise. Oh, oh, yeah, blimey. For, uh, anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah the, this, I've just shaved it off mid, mid-video, mid so. Oh, really? Where's uh, the tattoo? Oh, the tattoo listen, yet? I've got some news for you all as well. Um, the oh, tattoo, I've got, I got a quote for it. I got a quote for the tattoo, and they said between 50 and 100 quid, and I'm going to get honeysuckle on the bottom of my back, and I'm going to get a queen just on top of the O. No. Yeah, so. Exclusive, Charlie. That's there you good. go. Yes, Snoop Doggy <laughs> Doggy. And that's how we finish it with the sunglasses on uh, in <laughs> style. Great. It's hot takes. It's hot takes. We're on for this. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, thank you very much, Lee and Harry. And thank you, Harry, for telling us you are going to get the tattoo. Uh, thank you all for joining and we'll see you very soon.